welcome back to my channel. Today I'm filming that point shoe video where I'm going to talk about, I guess, the history of all the different point shoe brands that I've worn, what I liked about them, what I didn't like about them, and how I ended up with the point shoe that I'm wearing now, which is the Block Euro Stretch. I thought that with Nutcracker season coming up, it'd be appropriate to film this sort of thing for anyone who's debating between a couple different brands. Um, this is just what works for me, might not work for you, everyone has a different foot. So yeah, I have my Nutcracker mug, my Nutcracker shirt, and I'm ready to go. So let's get started. Okay, so I think I was about 14 years old when I first went on point. Um, the very first shoe I wore, which was very common in the dance world for a beginner shoe, was the Block European Balance. It's just a really good supportive shoe and pretty much tailors to like a lot of different feet. Um, I was in this shoe for about two and a half years. Um, as you can see, I'm going to insert some footage. <clears throat> as you can see, it was very blocky on my foot. Part of that was because it was my first years on point. Um, and then I got to a point where... I don't know if it just wasn't feeling comfortable anymore or also like once you reach a certain level like first when you first start out you want the shoe to be supportive for the student but as they start to advance you also want it to look like they have an arch and on me it kind of just looked like a brick foot so <laughs> my teachers had encouraged me to look at other brands which I was also excited about. So from there, I got fitted at the Rosin Box in Philly. Um, they unfortunately closed it down, but it used to be my favorite point shoe place. And the fitter there was told my mom, she was like, you're not gonna wanna hear this, but she is a freed foot. Um, for people that don't know, freeds are the shoes that a lot of companies were like, for example, the Royal Ballet and New York City Ballet specifically use these shoes. They're like paper they you go through them like tissues so my mom was like oh great like now I'm gonna have to <laughs> shell out more money for the shoes but I did have um a freed foot quote unquote and it that type of style of shoe is just very flattering on my foot so because I was still at that like intermediate level it was fine like I wasn't going to need a new pair every day so I started wearing the freeds um I was in those for about six months and this was gearing up towards the time of my first real summer intensive which was at North Carolina School of the Arts and my mom kind of talked to me and was like you're not going to be able to <laughs> just wear freeds because this was my first real summer intensive where you're dancing five days a week at least having multiple point classes plus being in North Carolina versus New Jersey the climate is warmer so the shoes are going to um, die faster for non-dancers basically the point shoes are made of a glue like paste and when it's hot especially that's going to break down easier or faster I should say so again I'd only been in the shoe for like six months but we knew it worked for me so we were kind of torn on what to do so we went back to the rosin box and then they put me in a suffix now suffix are basically the same thing as free. The owner of, and creator of Suffolk, Mark Suffolk, uh, actually used to be a maker for free. So very similar type of shoe we're getting into. So I started with the Stellar because that worked for me. And I was in a regular and a hard shank. I remember bringing that summer because we figured it would work. And having worn them that summer, I got used to them. You know, every time you're in a new kind of shoe, it's gonna feel weird, so it like, adjusts. But because it was so similar to the Freed, I didn't really have that trouble at all. Wore it for my first performance at a summer intensive, loved it. Um, at that point, I think because I had some multiple pairs with me, they were lasting me a week because I was rotating pairs. So I came back and I was still at my home studio at the time. So I wore those for Nutcracker, for auditions and then summer intensives after that. So I was in the suffix for a very, very long time. Um, I wore suffix for my first ballet variation on stage. Um, so that's basically like a solo for people that don't know. And wore them all throughout the rest of high school and going into my traineeship with American Repertory Ballet, that was last year. So I was wearing the suffix for a very long time. It was just working with me. Um, there was a period of time where they were very difficult to get, um, as demand for the shoe increased, um, more and more people wanted them, and they were harder to get a hold of. I remember 
we were originally dealing with Suffolk directly, but then there was a point in time where they were so behind in production, my mom had to like look up different places across the country that had my shoe in my size. And this was before, I think my summer at Richmond, we had to special order shoes from a point shoe store all the way in Delaware or Maryland, I think two different places, just to get a shoe to get me through the intensive because nobody near us had it. We had them shipped, it was probably more expensive than it should have been, but I really needed the shoes. So yeah, Suffix were working great for me. Although at a point, even though I was in the harder shank, I could tell they were still dying pretty quickly. And also for the Suffix, I don't know if it was just the way the makers were changing how they were making and constructing the shoe, I felt like it wasn't as flattering on my foot as it should have been. Because I don't have insanely good feet, but my teachers even said, like, you have a decent arch. It's not showing the full potential of your arch. I was able to do stuff in it, but was it always comfortable? Not necessarily. Also for sewing, <laughs> it took me a really long time to sew each pair because I was darning the tips because just the way the box was made, I felt like it looked more flattering when I was doing it. Um, I was taking out the drawstring because they had a cloth and putting in an elastic drawstring. Um, I crossed my elastics anyway, so I had to do an extra elastic. And then I was also three quartering the shoe, which I'll explain in a minute, and scraping the sides, all of that. So it was taking me so long to sew each shoe. And because it was my first year as a trainee, I was dancing more hours. So it was just really inconvenient for me to keep wearing that shoe. Then as I got into Nutcracker mode for American Repertory Ballet last year, I was like, this is not gonna work. And at the same time, I started having severe pain in my shins. So I was very reluctant personally to make this switch. I went to a local dance store and they had me try on gainers and gainers are known to be good for people dealing with injuries. So I was like, you know, I might as well because I can't afford time wise and financial wise to like keep sewing and getting new pairs of shoes and gainers are supposed to last longer. So I gave them a shot, even though I didn't really want to. Um, growing up, my teachers forbid it. We were not allowed to wear gainers. They were considered a cheater shoe. I personally don't feel that way necessarily about it, but going into it, I definitely did not want to switch. So for all of Nutcracker last year, I wore them. Um, I ended up actually having a stress reaction in my left shin and just regular sh severe shin splints in my right. So it was quite a painful time. Um, I ended up taking, I think, five weeks off after Nutcracker. And as I was getting back into it, that's the ideal time to change your shoe brands because you're off for a while. So it's not like, oh, I'm dancing 30 hours this week. Next week, let's change my shoe and see how that feels because it's not necessarily gonna work or be the most beneficial. So I went back to my suffix um, where I started back again. And I was just like, yeah, no. Um, I'm personally a turner, like I've always know, been known to do that, even in point shoes, like I was doing quadruples and five pirouettes occasionally, pretty consistently. In my suffix gainers, I could not do a double pirouette. Now that's not to shame the shoe per se, but I just did not like the way I felt in them. I felt like I had to almost cheat in order to turn. That's not the same for everyone. There are some professionals that look beautiful dancing in gainers. I do think a lot of fitters just put too many people in gainers. That's just my personal opinion. Like, I know some schools also want every student across the board to be in a gainer. I don't agree with that because everyone has a different foot, so it's not necessarily the best idea. Um, there's a certain point, <laughs> point, like time and place for it, I feel like. Um, someone who maybe isn't a beginner would be a good candidate for a gainer. I don't think it's a good beginner shoe. I don't think anyone should start with it unless you have insanely strong feet and you're gonna kill your shoe. I don't think it's the best idea. That's just my thoughts on it. So I did go back to the suffix because I was frustrated in the gainers and it was fine. I had several different shows. I guessed it at my old studio's production of Sleeping Beauty as the Lilac Fairy that spring. 
I was in Kirk Peterson's Beauty and the Beast, which was a world premiere. The company I was with, the school show, also did Don Quixote. That was all actually in the span of like a week and a half. I had all those shows and it was fine, but I, I knew in my heart I kind of wanted to explore other options. So this past summer was actually the first year I didn't go to a summer intensive. I stayed at home and I commuted to the company I was with at the time. Um, I did their mornings and then I kind of built my own intensive, I guess, by taking classes at different studios. And I felt that was beneficial for me um, mentally and physically, just to have like a little break getting ready for the upcoming season. And because I was kind of lenient with my schedule, it was the perfect time to once again try a new kind of shoot. I went with my mom to Philly to a point shoe store and I had heard about the block Euro stretch when it first came out many years ago. It might have been like four years ago, I don't remember. And it was kind of scandalous at the time because it has this three quarter shank on the outside versus just the inside. So I went into the fitting kind of like wanting to try it at the very least. Um, the woman that helped me was so helpful. It worked really well with my feet and the rest is history. So now I've been in the block Euro stretch since July. These shoes have lasted me so much longer than any shoe I've been in. Even though you can't jet glue them or like shellac them because of their shape, you kind of have to let them dry and do their own thing. They last me so much longer and I really like the way they are on my feet. I feel like they're very flattering. I'm able to roll through them, which is what I want. It's the goal of any point shoe or it should be. I can turn in them. I'm getting my consistent turns back again. Everything that I have been looking for in a shoe, honestly. Um, it hugs my foot and the arch, which is really nice. Um, the suffix, while they were still a good shoe, I, they just didn't work with my foot necessarily because you can see the difference. But there was just that extra fabric and it wasn't even a sizing issue. It was just the way the shoe is made. So this hugs my foot so much better because it has the stretch material that Block has been using and experimenting with in their shoes lately. Yeah, overall, I definitely love it. The shoes themselves have been able to last over a month because what I'll do is I have two or three pairs going at a time. I'm rotating between them. Sometimes, I think this happened a couple months ago, I had one pair that I worn for a little bit. I left it at home, had it sitting out for like two weeks. I put it back on, it's like good as new. And it's still like a regular shank. It's not plastic or anything. Again, not to shame gainers. I just don't like them necessarily for me. But yeah, I have really like them. I've been doing rehearsals in them, classes, definitely everything I've looked for in a shoe. Dancers know this, but for everyone that doesn't know, point shoes aren't going to be comfortable. Like, you, they can't be. It can't be like all pillowy and softy. That's another reason I don't like beginners and gainers, because they are more comfortable than other point shoe brands. So if they're used to like that soft, cushy feeling, and then they switch to a, like a real point shoe, it's a shock. But there are certain cases where I think people should be in gainers. Anyway, that was the sidebar. They're not comfortable, but they're much more comfortable than my suffix. Suffix, if I was in a rehearsal, let's say, let's say I had to run snow, and then there was like a 10 minute break and then I had to run flowers. In that 10 minute break, the suffix would literally like, well, first of all, they would have been dead by the time snow was over, even if they were brand new. And then the, just sitting in the shoe, or I guess standing, it would hurt so much. These, because they're a little bit stronger in the way they're made, my, my Euro stretch, I've gone rehearsals where I've been standing and teaching in them for 40 minutes in between my own rehearsals. I'll have a three hour rehearsal. Then I have a 30 minute break where I'm not sitting, I'm teaching. So I leave my shoes on and then I go into my next rehearsal. I feel fine. They do come with that same thing the Block European Balance comes with. It has that little cushion at the tips. I take it out because I don't like that much cushion in my shoe. Um, you just rip it out. Pretty simple. Not necessarily a big fan of that because I like to feel the floor, like I was saying in my dance bag video. Again, that's a personal preference. Everyone is different. I just don't like having it in my shoe. So that's it. That's my whole point shoe story. Um, if anyone has any specific questions about any of the shoe brands or just any point shoe questions in general, feel free to leave a comment and I will definitely get back to you on that. Um, I'll probably do some similar videos um, on this topic just because I like to share um, the knowledge I've 
earned over the years um, from my teachers. Especially if you are a dancer, it's just good to have this knowledge um, in the back burner so you can always improve. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like it in the future. So thanks so much for watching and I will see you guys next time.